everybody, I'm Sarah and this is Anna and we are Recorder Players! Welcome back to Team Recorder. Today is the second instalment of The Profiles where I am talking to other professional recorder players about their career. And today I have with me Anna Stegman! Hello! <laughs> so I have known Anna since I came to the Netherlands 10 years ago. We both came here at the same time. To study 2007. Yeah, Anna is now a professional recorder player, playing in lots of ensembles, performing all over the world, also teaching at the Royal Academy of Music in London. Since around eight or nine years, Anna has been playing in and running Ensemble Odyssey, which you see all of these CDs here, which is a Baroque ensemble. So, Anna, how did you get into playing the recorder? Um, well, I do come from a musical family and mm -hmm. My grandma was a singer, um, played also a little bit of the recorder. She was one of those people who just after the war was a little bit part of this whole rediscovering um, early music. Uh -huh. um, so I had lessons with her until I was maybe seven, but then... With your grandma? With, with my grandma. And I was 17 and I thought I would be really great to become a professional musician. So you yeah. already see there's lots of naivety uh, <laughs> coming along that <laughs> thought. Oh, just 17. don't do that. Oh, I do that. Um, and then again, uh, my Oma said, oh, well, you know, but um, the recorder, which I thought I could play really well, so I played the soprano recorder, the descant, yeah. um, she said, well, but it's, it's a professional series instrument, and if you want to do that and pass an entrance exam, you really yeah. should have a very good teacher, and there she was, and you a really good teacher by chance. Um, and I was lucky enough to have lessons with her for two years, so mm -hmm. I was 17. So this teacher managed to close many of the technical gaps I had and um, the um, yeah, repertoire I was yeah. sort of missing. So I, I think I just passed the entrance exam. <laughs> so you kind of thrown um, in the deep end. And... Exactly. Today I would say it was a bit of a blessing in disguise because um, I, had, um, I had the luck to not know so much yet. So I, I was yeah. in this complete state of enthusiasm every day, like, whoa, there's this concerto and Telemann and Vivaldi and <laughs> all the contemporary repertoire. So yeah. by the time maybe many of the very young players, very good players have done already a lot, everything was very new to me. And yeah. um, so I, I was really motivated. You were 17 when you actually really started lessons and you only yeah. played the soprano. And yeah, and I had to really like, a Vibrato, yeah. so the first couple of le lessons was just trying to play a straight note. But that's nice because a, a lot of my viewers come to the recorder later in life and mm. think, oh, because I'm not some kind of child genius, there's no hope, but, yeah. but there is, of course. Yeah, I mean, let me not lie, it, was, it wasn't easy. Being a musician is also a little bit a path where you keep learning, you never finish, and yeah. I, I really like that. Other yeah. people might find that frustrating, that you never are really finished, but I, I think that's really exciting and keeps me open-minded towards mm -hmm. many things. So you are one of the founding members of Ensemble Odyssey. We are a bunch of really nice people <laughs> that like each other, playing really great music. We are really interested in how um, might, it have, might it have sounded um, some two, three, four hundred years ago. Um, so we not only do research into the repertoire itself, but we try to play on appropriate instruments. Okay. Earlier this month, I went to visit Ensemble Odyssey while they were recording their newest CD. So here's a sneak peek. <laughs> and I think it's really important to realize that when you're a musician you're not only playing there's so much work behind the scenes like arranging the music and also the business side of it so that's something I really want to talk about today how much time in the ensemble would you say you spend playing and then doing business things of course what you see on stage is is the final product of of a bulk of work that's mm -hmm. been going on that starts with having an idea, a program idea, and executing that idea. And 
um, the execution is usually then, okay, you need to find the repertoire. Sometimes we often do play a repertoire which is not um, published yet. You can't give musicians the pass and say, play this, because it's yeah. either full of mistakes, it's incomplete, okay. uh, stuff like that. So um, a lot of times when we do a program with more unknown music, this is part of the work to, to make those additions. So you're not only just buying a book of music and no. playing it, you're constructing it. No, yes, yeah, that, I mean, that of course can also happen, but, but even then, I think as a professional musician, you should have a critical look on what mm -hmm. an editor hands over to you. Yeah. And often with Baroque music, we have different versions of pieces, um, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Of course, you've got a program, you've got the music, you need to organize the people, um, you need to find money to pay them, so then you need to write a, um, a convincing funding application, you need to put together a tour, you need to organize the concert. Wow. So um, I would say there's such an amount of work and all what you see peeking out of the <laughs> iceberg <laughs> is the concert, it's the beautiful moment on stage when everyone tries to look relaxed and have fun, <laughs> which is most of the time the case. So <laughs> let's say you have a concert lasting two hours, hmm. how many hours of work have gone into that? Oh, or all the rest of our lives basically. <laughs> how did you learn the business side, writing funding applications, organising musicians, taxes? Yeah. Um, how does that go? You learn by doing. So if someone would have told me when I was 17, this is what you do later, I probably would have run away. But like, <laughs> no, I don't want to do that. I can't. For me, it was really a learning by doing process and also doing it together with other people um, yeah. who help you. So um, yeah, I was, I was really lucky to be in an ensemble which had been doing fundraising before. So I had a mm. little bit of an idea how it works. But then, of course, to apply that to your own ensemble is still a different story. What would you say is the most rewarding and the most difficult things about running an ensemble? One difficult thing is always um, time to get the right people together at the right moment, mm -hmm. especially um, I've been really lucky to, to play with, with fantastic Baroque violin players, harpsichord players, oboists, yeah. and those people are also wanted by other people. And yeah. um, next to the time aspect comes the money aspect, to find the money to make it financially rewarding also for people because we all need to pay around. Yeah, because it's a, it's a proper job. Exactly, yeah, there is a job. That's a scary thing. <laughs> and the most rewarding thing, um, I mean, to stand on stage and let loose of all that what I said before and to just yeah. enjoy music with fantastic musicians who happen to be your friends as well, which is an important aspect in our ensemble. You put in all that work and you get a beautiful musical result and everyone is happy on stage and then you can make people happy in front of the stage as well. Um, it's the best job in the world. It is. When if, it's, if, it's works, if it works, it's really good. Yeah. <laughs> what advice would you give to um, a recorder player who's looking to set up their own ensemble? Mm, maybe less of an advice but a warning. Um, <laughs> so don't do it alone. It's very important to have a good team of people around you who are like-minded but at the same time different enough that you can compensate your strong and weak sides. So Odyssey already has five CDs out and your newest CD is coming out when? Um, in just before summer 2018. Okay. So keep your ears and eyes open. We would like to give away one of our William Bevel CDs with his concerti for six flute. <laughs> to enter the giveaway for the Ensemble Odyssey William Bevel CD, all you have to do is subscribe to the Ensemble Odyssey newsletter. The link is in the description and we are going to choose the 25th person who subscribes wins yes. the CD. Very ambitious yes. today. Go! But last time a lot of my viewers really wanted to hear a duet. I love... Okay. Fantastic! <laughs> so we're going to sight read some Telemann. <laughs>
my phone oh. falling on the floor at the end. If you enjoyed this Telemann Canonic Sonata, you can do a play along with me. I'll put a link to that video at the end. So Anna, thank you. So, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much for coming to talk to me. If you are interested in all the stuff Anna and Ensemble Odyssey are doing, down in the description below, I'm gonna put all the links. Don't forget to enter the giveaway for this CD. As always, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on my face down here. Up there, I'm going to give a link to the Team Recorder shop where you can buy all kinds of Team Recorder merch. And up here is a link to my Telemann Canonic Sonata play-along video. Thank you for watching and have a great day. Bye.